Right, so as per the previous tutorial, uh, we've established that we can get play tilde to play back a sound that's contained within the buffer object. It just has to have the same name as the buffer, which in this case is my sound one, my sound one. Um, <clears throat> and in this case, we've got a way of looping that sound. So uh, I've got the line object which is reading from 0 milliseconds to 2000 milliseconds over 2000 milliseconds which means it's playing back at normal rate but only the first two seconds of the sound because that's all that is contained within uh, the buffer um, and by the way I've, I've loaded in drum loop which is a sound that is more than two seconds but I'm, I'm only reading the first two seconds worth so when I click on uh, this message box we hear that sound being looped uh, obviously at the moment I have no way of turning that loop off beyond uh, either getting rid of the cable or inserting a gate object or something as we've, we've done uh, in, a, in a previous tutorial. But there's another way of looping uh, the play tilde object which is um, uh, a bit more versatile and that is to use an object called phasor. And phaser is an object which counts between 0 and 1 over a specified period. But it being a tilde object, so it's an MSP object, it's counting at a signal rate, or it's outputting numbers at signal rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to make an object that will be able to display what it's outputting, and that's the number tilde object. So that will display a number that is being output at, at signal rate. Um, and there's one thing I need to do which is to change the update interval. I won't say too much about this at this point, um, but it just means that we will see the numbers more clearly. Um, so if I send a value to the left-hand inlet of phaser, that will tell it at what rate to count from 0 to 1. And it operates in hertz. Uh, so um, 1 hertz is one count from 0 to 1 every second, as you can see is happening there. But I can reduce the rate and we'll see it counting slower. So this, if I did it at, say, 0 0.5, it would count from 0 to 1 every 2 seconds. And it's doing that, as you can see. So essentially what we're doing is creating a loop. We're creating a loop between zero, a, a count that goes from 0 to 1 and then back to 0 counting to 1, and then back to 0, counting to 1. So how's that going to be useful when it comes to triggering an output from the play tilde object? Uh, well, all we need to do to this number that's counting from 0 to 1 is to make it count instead from 0 to 2000, which we can do by uh, multiplying that number. So now if I take the signal number box down to the next outlet, you can see that it's now counting from 0 to 2000 over the same period that we specified for phaser to count to 1. And all I need then to do is to connect that to the line object, uh, sorry, to the play object. I'll get rid of the line object now. And you'll hear that it is now. counting through the, or reading through the sound, at the appropriate rate, conveniently, because I had told phaser to count at uh, 0 0.5 hertz, which means it counts from 0 to 1 over 2 seconds, which is exactly the length of time we want for this particular sample. Which is fine, except that our samples that we might want to use and to loop through aren't always going to be 2 seconds long. So let's do something about that. Uh, first of all, we need to provide a means for buffer to uh, load a sound that is of, of any length, really. So we will do that. Um, I'm going to do a drop file, which we've looked at before. And instead of read, I'm going to put replace. So whatever the, um, the new file is, uh, buffer knows to resize itself in order to accommodate it. Um, and I'll put the dollar one so that it will uh, throughput the file path along with that message to replace. So that's <coughs> that will 
that will allow buffer to accommodate the larger sound. But the play object or play tilde object is still only going to be uh, counting from 0 to 2000 because the phaser object is going 0 to 1 and that's being multiplied by 2000 here. So we need to tell the multiplication object how long the file is, which we don't currently know. Uh, but we do have an object which will tell us, and that is info tilde. Um, and info tilde is another object that can read data from the buffer tilde object. We just need to give it the same name again. So my sound one. Um, and you'll see that info has lots and lots of out outlets, and each one will provide some information about whatever's stored within the buffer. So if we move along here, we have sustain uh, information, we have the loop length, and just towards the end we have the total time in milliseconds. And also, by the way, the next one along is the most recent file name, so it will also report the name of the file that you dropped into the buffer, which can be handy sometimes. So we can get it to report both of those things. I'll use a message box to show that. So first of all, I'll open up this buffer object so that we can see that it's empty. Um, and then if I were to find a file to load in, uh, we'll use the drum loop again, and drop that in, you will see that uh, while before it only had one channel, it's now accommodating two, and it's accommodating the full length of the, uh, the file there. Um, but we still don't have any information coming out of info. What we need to do for that is to uh, send a bang to info and it will report what we want it to report. So it's telling us that it's 3478 3, milliseconds and it's called drum loop. We might want this to happen as soon as we uh, drop the file in um, and we can do that easily because the right hand outlet of the buffer object says read operation completed uh, so it will send a bang when that's happened. Um, so now if I were to drag a different sound in then um, it will update immediately as soon as I've dragged that in. Um, and then, of course, all I need to do is to connect this total time outlet to the right-hand inlet of the uh, multiplication object, uh, and it will update accordingly. So we'll see now, uh, having dragged in a different sound, which is the snare sound, that this is a shorter sound. Uh, what's coming out of multiplication is only counting to about 800 milliseconds. So we can actually hear that happening. So that's taking two seconds to read through that sample. And it will take two, sam two seconds to read through any sample that we drag in, whether that's a kick, which sounds OK, whether it's a hat, or whether it's the drum loop that we had first of all. And you'll notice that it's been transposed up because it's trying to cram about, well, it's trying to cram nearly three, three and a half seconds worth of sound into two seconds. But we, we are able now to just drag in a sound and it will loop for us. Um, the next question, of course, would be how would we make the phaser object read through the play tilde object at an appropriate rate, given the length of the sound file that you've dragged in? Uh, well, that again just requires a little bit of maths, and this required a little bit of maths down here. We just need a bit more. Um, and that is, uh, if we know that phaser operates in hertz, let's turn this down again. So we know two things in order to make that calculation. And that firstly is that the phaser object operates in hertz. So one hertz would make phaser count from zero to one over one second, and thereby whatever value we've got in here will count to that value over one second. If we know that the length of the sample is being reported in milliseconds, then we just need to calculate what ratio of a second this is in order to calculate the rate that we need to be sending to phaser. Um, so to do that, we need to know how long a second is in milliseconds, and that, of course, is 1,000. Oops. Um, and we need to divide 1,000 by the length of the sound that we're inputting. So that would be uh, to do that. 
This basically reverses the inputs for a division such that we have the right hand side being divided by the left hand side. So here we can get uh, what will be, if I drag in the drum sound again, uh, three and a half seconds divided by one second will give us a value which will give us our rate for the phaser and that will make it play back at normal speed. So I just need to do that. Drag in the drum loop again. Oh, I didn't put a point in after the 1000, that's why it's just stopped. So it's truncated, the, the, value, the ratio that we're getting out is uh, less than 1, so of course it's truncated to 0. Let's try that again. There we go. So now we should oops, hear it playing back at normal speed. And that will happen with any sound that we drop in. So that could be a snare sound. So that's an appropriate pitch, kick, appropriate pitch, hat, appropriate pitch, and so on. So we're getting exactly what we want. And knowing this means that we can now synchronize different loops um, using the same phaser object because it's always going to count between the beginning of a file and an end of a file over a particular rate, a specified rate. Um, so having sp established that rate for this first input sample, we could copy some of the content of this engine, not all of it, because we don't need to duplicate the phase of it. That's going to be done elsewhere. But the rest of it we can duplicate, like that, in order to accommodate another sound. So let's say this one will be my sound too. In order to input another sound, we need to have uh, change all of these so that they refer to a separate buffer that will accommodate that other sound. Um, and I then just need to connect this play object to the output. Or actually maybe I'll give it I'll send it to a different output or a different volume control because our samples might be different loudnesses. Like that. Um, and I'll drive this once again with the same phaser object because we want them, again, if we want them to be synchronized, they both need to be um, driven by the same count. So let's try this. We'll have a drum loop sent to the left hand player. So that's playing our drum loop. Um, and I'll find another sound that I know is a loop. And that will, oops, that one we'll use to fill the other buffer. So we have two synchronized loops. Obviously, the right hand one, the dongly one, um, is playing at a slower rate because it is dependent on the speed of the, or the length of the, uh, of our kind of master sound that we've used for the first button here. But otherwise it works fine. And of course you could just keep adding these um, engines, just keep duplicating uh, the buffer buffers, changing their names each time um, and making them all coordinate. Okay, so I've just neatened up the patch a little bit and added an extra sound, uh, all of which are kind of uh, part of Max's repertoire of demonstration sounds. Um, but these ones are all loops, and you can hear that they are um, looping consistently according to uh, the rate of this first drum loop sound. <laughs> 